morning. This is Play to Win with Mark Anderson Leary and my good friend Brad Fryer. It's been two weeks since we uh, uh, skipped two weeks, so yeah. I need to give you ex- take 20,000 extra volts this morning so you can feel 1 million percent energized. How are you? Fantastic. I, I gotta say, I missed that Monday morning greeting, so I'm glad we we're back and yeah. I'm glad that you have brought the energy. For sure, man. For I mean, sure. How can you not have the energy when the weather's like it is outside? Oh my God! So, I <laughs> I, uh, I have the tops down on the Jeep, which of course is why my hair is doing its thing. You know, whatever. Yep. Uh, I'm so careful leaving the house that the hair was right, and then I get in the car and I'm like, okay, all right, here we go. <laughs> uh, but uh, late, crazy late, because uh, uh, things went with the kid, with the son, my son, all wonky and and dog walking wants to ride his bike disaster and i i'm an hour behind starting and so everything was just the dominoes had fallen over each other and so i'm running out of the house and i'm and i look up and it's just like the most beautiful day like ever it's like 61 degrees um and there's there's those those cottony wispy clouds against the the uh, the blue sky Blue, um, blue sky. It's just uh, it's just an, an amazing experience to just feel grateful for everything and especially being alive. Indeed, amen to that, brother. Did you get? Have you been out today? Yeah, you you noticed it. I mean, where are, where are you, by the way? <laughs> I'm I'm at home. This is this is the backyard. So I'm just uh, I'm, I've had some uh, internet connectivity issues at the office. So I said, I am not risking it this morning with Mark Henderson Leary. No. I am going to make sure I have good connectivity. That's smart. That's smart. You don't want to put things at risk. No such things as internet connections or timely is- timeliness issues. <laughs> so I, I, kind of so I, um, well, I mean, I have a, I have a theme, and, but I, and I can introduce it in a minute. But I want to catch up more, you know, more what's going on in your world since you and I haven't talked in, in like three weeks now. Um, how's the family? Family as well, actually. Yeah. <clears throat> My oldest daughter was in this past weekend from college to visit. And, uh, it's always good to see her. And um, yeah, man, if you with, with the. Friday night lights for high school football for my youngest daughter on the drill team. And that was, you know, Friday nights are late nights now. Um, Saturday mm-hmm. spent Saturday watching Texas lose again to an Oklahoma team in <laughs> rare fashion. Uh, and then caught glimpses of the Texans getting absolutely pummeled again yesterday. So, hey, not a, sh- not a shut up. Not a shut oh, up. No. <laughs> oh, no. Three, three. three. Uh, it's high school bit, team won on Friday night, which was a good thing. So you had a boy to Friendswood High School, but uh, the other two teams just uh, something to be desired. So a uh, possible second theme suddenly. I, I uh, it, it, <laughs> think about the Texans. I, I was I watched a little bit of the game. I, I don't know if my mom was over. There. We talked about it, but I think she was over at the time. And we, were, we would, football was kind of on, and uh, it's like you know, it's it's kind of more enjoyable. And this is going to be we'll see where this goes it's kind of more enjoyable to watch the texans now that i don't have any expectation that they're going to play well at all like i'm just like i'm not even for a minute hopeful so when things go terribly like i'm there's no disappointment i'm just it's like (laughs) so so the only the only rub to that and and this is just as a longhorn fan um i didn't expect us to be able to compete against ou this year but yet there we were 18 point lead going into the second half and then to lose in the last two minutes of the game, although you don't expect to win, to lose in that fashion is heartbreaking. Oh yeah. And so then, and, so and then you, we have OSU this past weekend, and they're you know they were ranked number twelve, we're twenty five. So once again, minimal expectations, yeah. but had a substantial lead, and then to blow it in the fourth quarter is you know. So to your point, when you don't have any expectations, there's no heartbreak. But, so like, but the, Houston, the Houston Texans, the Houston Texans did not could even could even. I did. There was no close. heartbreak at all. No so heartbreak. you you had the sense of that's heartbreak. Okay. I get that. Like you almost get the upset, and that's amazing. But like there was no upset potential with the yeah. other. So worst that's that's team the that's league. the dichotomy, right? If you yeah. if you have minimal expectations, you know you can kind of relax and just hope for a, a, a decent game. But if you have no expectations and then they achieve. But then let you down at the end. Yeah, oh for sure, <laughs> so I've seen that. But it's, it, I guess there's a if we're going to go down this team, and maybe we should should sure. or shouldn't, we'll see that um, as a as a team that you're on, <laughs> and if winning and success seems like a long shot, it's not motivating. 
you know, people d don't have the same uh, commitment to winning that they yeah. do when they feel that winning is, is more normal and it is possible. And it, uh, you know, that's certainly, certainly been my experience. And I'm I don't even know exactly know where I'm going with this because when I teach leadership teams to, to set goals, I say like, you know, if, if you want to win the Super Bowl and you haven't won any single regular season games, you know, you know, keeping beating the drum about Super Bowl wins is not helpful. And so yeah. you know, let's talk about like get some reps on the practice field to see if we can do some some basics and build up from there. Well, and I think I think something that we miss as spectators in a, in a, in a sport is that we don't know what they're measuring in the locker room. Right. Yeah. And so to your point, you know, as, as a leader of an organization or as someone who coaches leaders, we tend not to focus on the scoreboard, right? We tend to focus on, especially in EOS, you know, you, you, you're focused on, you know, the, the, the boulders and the rocks and the pebbles and the, you know, yeah. it's, it's, you're not, you're not focused on the scoreboard. You're focused on what do I need to do today to be successful? And well, we so, actually have a tool called the scorecard, which is based on the weekly activities that we're trying to drive towards. And so it's yeah. it's not like this, that's interesting. The scoreboard could be confusing. It's like, you know, are we it's the win loss, which is the results, which in most businesses is some sort of P&L assessment. It's either the right. quarterly, monthly or annual. You know, did we make money this year? But yeah. the scorecard uh, in the EOS is are you doing the right activities every single week that when done consistently lead to good things? Right. Yeah, so I mean, you know, when the Texans hit the locker room last night, or they show up this morning to to break down the film and talk about their their KPIs, you know, maybe they see you know the, what was the score three to thirty one or something insane yesterday. Yeah, they might break down the game very differently than we do, right? You know, they, obviously they don't have their star starting quarterback. They've they've got some injuries. They've had issues. Uh, a new a new coach. So they weren't expecting to be great this year. So, you know, what are they measuring? How do they view their performance yesterday? You know, take the scoreboard out of the picture. You know, if they're breaking down, you know, blown tackles, missed assignments, um, you know, Q, uh, quarterback rating, you know, they might break down the game into some of those scorecard issues that you guys talk about when you're talking to leaders and have a very different picture, right? And so, you know, as, as an organization, especially in times that are that are volatile like last year you might not have the scoreboard looking the way that you want it but are we doing things every day that give us something to celebrate that give us something to say okay well we're making headway we're we're you know it's not as bad as it looks or we're building towards having tremendous momentum going into 22. Yeah, so there's, there's a real phenomenon that's really worth unpacking here that i don't think people talk about enough and that is something I got from one of my coaches, Rian Doris, with the, I'm going to keep, I should plug him and uh, the Flow Research Collective and the work that they've done with Stephen Kotler. Uh, but one of the things that that, that that program talks about is the difference between exponential growth and exponential change versus logarithmic change. And I'll unpack all this. <laughs> uh, and linear. So every, and linear is sort of what everybody expects. It expects like you're going to show up, you're going to make 10 calls, you're going to close half of them, and you're going to or, or whatever some, you know, you just get a from day one, it's a numbers game. And as things unfold, you, a little a little bit of wind is going to accumulate. Well, there are two very, very more, much more likely um, curves of how things play out. And one is uh, the logarithmic, which is the one people don't talk about that much, but I think is very worth talking about. And that is when uh, the curve jumps at the beginning, the bump is at the beginning. And so you get a lot of immediate reward for your effort, and then it tapers off. For example, going to the gym and working out. Like within the first couple of weeks, you're like, this is amazing. Look at me, I'm huge. I'm going to be Arnold in 12 weeks. It's going to be amazing. And then like somewhere in 12 weeks, like I don't think I've changed since week three. And mm -hmm. so, you know, that's, that's, there's a lot of things like that that, that, that take and then they begin to uh, taper off. Assuming the same effort. <laughs> Assuming the same effort, yeah, for yeah. sure. Well, even still, I mean, you, if you look at somebody who is giving it a hundred percent and it, or in more and more and more effort as an individual, you don't see linear growth at the gym. There aren't people do not continually add 10, point, 10 pounds to the, to yeah. their bench every single week for for hundred weeks in a row. That's not how yeah. it works. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking of runners. Right, the first mm -hmm. the first analogy that pops into my mind is a runner. I mean, at some point, yeah. 
you know, you, you know, in your first year, you might go from running a, a, a 10 minute mile down to a seven minute mile. But then you yeah. hit a point where you go from a seven minute mile to a six fifty eight mile, and that's a huge accomplishment. Right, right, for sure. Because exactly. yeah, because the 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 amount of improvement becomes uh, much more finite. Yeah, yeah, and you have to change your scale. And that, yeah. it used to be like I'd take a minute off. Now, like, now I take scale. two seconds off. Like you got to change the scale. Yeah. So yeah. flipping it around, this is the one that I I think. Well, they both they're they're both really important to understand. Um, but I, you have to understand this one to know when you're wasting time and energy, and that is the exponential growth curve. And when, when, when I first thought of this, you, I would think of like the hockey stick, right? And in the way that people tell the hockey stick, like you know, we're sucking now, but we're gonna crush it. To, we're gonna go straight to the moon, and you know, in, in six months or twelve months, and and that's. That that story is told very cautiously for obvious reasons. Like you're hoping for a miracle. You're, you know, all it no. looks like it looks like we're wasting time, but it's going to be great down the line. But there, but it's actually real, and and there are many things that we do that are not going to show visible progress like that we want for some time. We yeah. plant a garden, we plant those seeds, and it's not like, oh, I planted 100 seeds today, and so tomorrow I get two plants. Like I get no plants tomorrow, no plants at all. <laughs> So those 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 take a while. And yeah. so the activity like building a sales pipeline, if you've ever experienced this, okay, cool. I know my close ratios are. Let's pick up the phone and I'll get some closed deals. No. <laughs> like you plant seeds, you cultivate them and like and and, I, and everybody who's ever been in a sales position has had this same disappointment when they talk to somebody says, "You know, this sounds great." But let's pick this conversation up in six months for this very good reason that you can't you can't talk me out of. And you're like, yeah. I'm gonna need that in six months. But right, I really wanted it today. Yeah. <laughs> I really wanted that to close today. So there's a lot of activities that you just have to do over and over again, and and build that the build market awareness, branding, build a bench, build talent, build capital, um, build market intelligence, build build marketing assets. Uh, Build yourself in the gym, uh, build up your endurance, build your sleep, get your immune system up, doing these things that eventually can get you in the in path to get the result you're, you're looking for, uh, the ability to, to climb a mountain, the ability to win a championship, the ability to close that big deal. Uh, but, but it's all groundwork that just sits below the surface if, that mm -hmm. you must tend to. Yeah. So, so when, you, when you're coaching your clients on on changing, changing the scale, what, mm. what areas, what areas do you, do you see companies and, and, and maybe even producing individuals struggling the most on when it comes to God, I'm putting in a lot of effort, but I'm not getting the, the, the type of outcome I was hoping for. Well, there's, there's a real, um, there's, there's two there's two things there that, that kind of go in the same bucket. One is, of course, setting goals that are realistic. And, and any times that there's, we're gonna we need we need twenty dollars a day. That's just that's just reasonable in our world. Well, how many are you doing today? Well, I don't know. I think we did three last week. Okay, yeah. let's 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 work to four last week or four this week and work our way up to build the habits. There's a lot of things that need to change. And so having some sense of attainability and motivation that that's a big factor. But the other part of that that, that is not that is, it's hard to just sort of. I'm going to have to unpack this with me uh, okay. because I don't exactly know how this is going to come out. You have to know what's going to work. <laughs> you have to know uh, or, or, or be ready. I guess that's probably the second piece of that. You either have to know what's going to work eventually and follow a proven recipe or you have to be ready to experiment and find out what's going to work, knowing that yeah. lots and lots is not going to work. And probably you're not going to knock it out of the park right away. And if you do, it might be a spurious accident that goes away on the second or third attempt. Yeah. Well, and so, and, and that's, there's a, uh, there's words of caution there too, because, you know, just break it down to the simplest, uh, you know, when people think of business development and sales, they think of cold calling. And although cold calling is still an important piece of the puzzle, there's a dozen other things you can be doing for business development. But the first thing that, that it, it's not always just, hey, is that activity working or not? Because there are some activities where you do them, but you're not doing them well, uh, or you're not doing them as well as they could be done. And so you have to first check out, okay, am I doing them well? Yeah. But, but also tracking, right? And, and, and I know you guys have a lot of tracking um, 
mechanisms so that you can identify what's working and not working. Because if you identify things that are working, you do more of that. You've identified things that aren't working and you've assessed that you're actually doing them well. Uh, then if, if, if you're doing them well and they're not working, then you have to, then you need to minimize those and migrate to something that's going to produce results. But, well, there's, a, there's a degree of conceptualness to this that can make it be hard to listen or hard to understand. And so if you say, and what I mean by know what's going to work, if you're going to go to market, uh, you have to know your buyer, right? So you, that works. Right? We know that when you know your buyer, you can sell to them. Okay, all right. right. Let's let's tie let's, t- let's let's tie that concept down. So what do you need to do? Figure out what's on their mind. So how, what works to do that? You talk to them. Okay, so great. We got a plan here. <laughs> so we're working our way to, to that, which is. And so how are you going to talk to them? I'm going to pick up the phone. I'm going to call them. What are you going to ask them? I don't know. Let's figure the questions out. And you're working our way backwards to a plan that always works. What I described always works. Uh, but that's different than I hired a sales guy. And I, and what's he doing? I don't know. He's not working. Okay, you can do more of that. I don't know. Probably because most people do. Most people. <laughs> so statistically yeah. speaking, you're probably going to let that guy waste your money and time and his t- money and time and life. And he's not going to hit commission in a quota. <laughs> and eventually, you're going to s- s- fire him six months after you should have because you didn't follow the path that we know works. So mm-hmm. plugging plugging into the model that knows that we, that we know that works. So if I know my buyer, so all the variables. Like if you know my buyer, and I don't need to do that, and I know they buy for these three reasons. Okay, what do you do? You prospect to them with that message. Okay, we know that works as a concept, but tactically, some of those tactics work better than others. And okay, so let's try calling. Oh, that's let's, do, let's try inviting to events. Let's try email. And what what do we know works? Well, the stuff that we have data on. So you have to work your way from the the conceptual what we know works down to the stuff that eventually does work. Uh, as we experiment our way through it, what doesn't work is taking your eye off the sense of direction on the foundations that are timeless. Mm-hmm. That was heavy. <laughs> um, well, so, so going back to so going back to where we started, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, as as we as we're getting close to the end of twenty one. Um, and people are beginning to do goal setting and, and strategic planning for 22. Uh, it seems like the, the, the note that needs to be, or the, the concept that needs to be taken away from, from today is, yeah, we need to set that, we need to set the, um, the goals, uh, as far as top line, bottom line, whatever the, the scoreboard is right on the scoreboard. There's yeah. there's two numbers. There's the winners numbers and the, and there's a the loser number. Mm-hmm. But beneath that, you know, as a, as a leader or as an individual producer, we can't control. You know, the scoreboard is a lagging indicator, right? By the time yeah. the, by the time the fourth quarter, uh, you know, buzzer goes off, nothing you can do about those numbers. And so, what? what is it that we should be measuring you know january 1st you sit down at your desk or january 2nd because you've already nursed your hangover january 2nd you sit down at your desk what are the things you're doing that week to create the scoreboard for january 31st right i mean uh december 31st, December 31st yeah yeah so what are we doing today what are those what are those incremental goals and targets we're setting so that we can a have some success early to keep us motivated to keep us incentivized but also knowing that we can't control the outcome all we can control is the input you know yeah. you, you you mentioned going to the gym number one new year's resolution get in shape lose weight you can't you can't i mean you can but not in a healthy way force weight off of you right the only thing you can can, can do is is control the two key factors, input, output, you know, on a daily basis. Am I eating a healthy, uh, a healthy diet? You know, is, is what I, is my input healthy on a daily basis? And am I tracking and monitoring and measuring to, to make sure that I'm doing that right? And then also on the output, you know, what am I doing today? What's the physical exertion I'm doing today? Is it a walk? Is it a jog? Is it a, a, a lifting weights? Is it yoga? Is it whatever? And those are the only two things you can control because you can't control the scoreboard. You know, you can't fast forward six weeks and go, okay, I'm, you know, six pounds down and I can run a nine minute mile. You can't do that unless all of those incremental things happen. And yeah. so 
you know, as you look forward to 22, making sure that we're focused on the behaviors, the daily behaviors is going to be critical. Yeah. So there's a discipline and goal setting uh, that I've I've identified and it is uh, it doesn't have a name for me for me yet. I need, need one. And that is the variable of how much um, chaos and how how much outside of your control do you want to predict as part of your goal? And because I learned it's not zero and it's not 100 percent either. Yeah. And so because it, it was zero. If it was zero, every salesperson could say like, well, I don't know how many sales I'm going to close. Like I can't sign for them. Like I, you know, like I can't take a quota, you know, you, <laughs> so we know that's not how that works. So mm -hmm. the further out you go, the more, you, the more you can predict, right? You can say the further out you go, I'm, I'm, I can predict a lot of things in nature. I can predict how, you know, on average, how much rain we're going to have. I can predict on average what, what, what's going to happen here, but like, what can I do? What can I do in the next moment? It's a very different set of, of factors. And so it works it works uh, backwards from these longer term outcomes, very outcome driven and oftentimes very timeless. You know, if you want to live a great life, this balanced and happy and, and with no money worries, that that's a that's something that's kind of timeless and, and can push way out in the future. And it's in if using sort of Rian and the flow research um, terminology, it, their, your your purpose moves closer to you and in, into things like high hard goals so that's their you know, big big hairy things that you want to get done that are a little more in the uh, future than immediate then you keep chunking it down to very specific clear goals and these clear it moves all the way down to clear goals of like i will pick up the pen <laughs> i will type 100 words today and so it, so that is exactly right uh you you want to move from this like world we live in i mean to really jump you know one of the best uh, goals of like a long-term goal of a business I've ever, ever encountered was Microsoft's a computer on every desktop. And I love it because Microsoft had that goal, achieved that goal. When they created that goal, it was, it's not a goal. It's, it's, it's just bigger than that. Vision. The BHAG, yeah. <laughs> big vision. Yeah. Um, when they created that, they didn't even make hardware. They didn't make computers. All they made was software that went on computers, and they and they envisioned yeah. a, envisioned a world where computers were so valuable. And so it's, it was very outside of their control, and they had a piece of it. And yeah. and you can do that when it's far in the future. And as you move toward today, I'm going to close ten deals today. Really? I'm going to call ten people. That that, that works. <laughs> we yeah. we can do that. You know you know fifteen people <laughs> call. 10 of them. That, that's very, very, very possible as opposed to, I'm going to 10 out of 10 close the deals. That's, that's setting yourself up for failure. Yeah. No, it's good. But I do think it's important for you to, because I, every organization I've ever worked with has had a variable on, on that. We're going to yeah. get this, this, this deal done. Oh, well, we, we've got some third parties who are very bureaucratic and all we can do is get it submitted. And I have no idea what's going to happen after that. Okay. So set the goal that we're going to have it submitted. You're not going to have it back. You don't know how long it's going to take for them to come back. Other things it's like, we, we, we can influence them. We can pick up the phone right. there's third parties, but, but we know how to move, make it rain and we will. And so, yeah, bring that into your goal. So when you think about some of those incremental goals, um, for non-producers, mm -hmm. yeah, right. What comes to mind? I mean, like for me, I think about leaders and obviously one of the, the things that as a leader, you should always be doing is looking to top grade your team and, and bringing on, on, you know, top talent. And so, you know, if you're not a producer, things like, you know, always recruiting, um, always interviewing, you know, how many interviews, how many conversations are you having a day, a week, a month for potential candidates that when an opportunity arises, you've got a bench of, of candidates ready to, ready to be hired. Um, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's conversations with your current employees and, and, you know, how much time do you invest with each person on coaching, on training, on mentoring, um, you know, and, and if it's zero now, then what's a, what's a realistic number? It's 15 minutes a week, maybe. And it's a scheduled yeah. time and it's that weekly individual meeting with, with each team member. Um, that reminds me that one of the, one of my favorite and misunderstood tools in EOS is the quarterly conversation. Quarterly conversation is a, a meeting uh, once a quarter with your direct reports to talk about five things uh, or three things. The, there's five of each on average. And it's the roles in their position, which are typically about five. The core values of the organization, which are somewhere in the ballpark of five or less, usually. And uh, the five or so major projects that we or major initiatives that they're influenced uh, and influencing and working on, which we call rocks in EOS. So those three things. The, the element of that conversation, though, is that when... Uh, 
organizations start having conversations amongst direct reports, it turns into this review process and the annual review process, the quarterly review process and the, and the compensation and all this bureaucracy that makes them just horrible and slows mm -hmm. down uh, information flowing. So yeah. when I teach this tool, I'm like, I need you to get out of your head the annual review. I need you to get in your mind low friction, low bureaucracy conversations. Converse, just have conversations and talk to your, all your direct reports and get that information flowing. And so yeah. that, that's the kind of thing. Let's make sure we have conversations. Let's get friction out of the things that when, when we do them, we have more loyalty. We have more conversations. We have more awareness. And so that's, that's that is a very good example of like highly valuable, like, like hard to calculate the value of having you know, if you've got six direct reports, six meaningful conversations that you would not have likely had that are structured around making sure your team is communicating and you know what's up and what they need. So, so you bring up a great point, right? Because it's not just the behavior, it's not just the activity, it's knowing the intent and, and the practicum of the activity. You know, just meeting with your, your, your direct reports, just meeting with them is something but knowing what the intent behind each of those meetings should be, right? Whether you're meeting on a weekly basis and, and the intent is to talk about status and blah, 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 whether it's meeting quarterly and the goal is to talk about the you know, core values and key projects, whether it's about you know, the annual review, but each of those meetings has a different purpose and has a different intent and has different tempo and cadence and, um, and effort put into it. So, I think that's a, I think that's an important distinction. You know, be prepared. Know what you're doing. Know why you're doing it, uh, and and know how you're going to do it. We've got about yeah. uh, a minute and a half, so I don't yeah. know if you want to try to to encapsulate or. Uh, yeah, so I, I do. When we talk about smart goals, one of the words that's, that throws us off a little bit is the specific. And I can talk about all of them ad, ad nauseum. But specific means just ca capture why you're doing this. And so if you're breaking this down, if you're a manager of a team and you got a scorecard and you know that the you know scorecard is a small number of activities and there's one activity that you know that if you focus on it good things come from it know that know why know why you're doing this uh, and and if you're setting goals for yourself and you're setting activities you know bring it down specifically what is the point of this and if i do this one thing over and over again what what comes from that okay. and so uh, I think probably to wrap the, this up, uh, understanding uh, my particular view on goal setting, there's lots of stuff, but it's really long game and short game. And the longest game is whatever you determine it is. It's on the other side of a few major activities or maybe even miracles that have to happen. And then bring it to, and make sure you're lined. That's the 90 day and beyond long term prediction. And then your short term prediction is what is the most valuable activity right now? Take yourself right into the moment and what can you control and get as specific about it as you can be and set it attainably. You know, don't, if you need to write a book, you know, today's not the day to write the book. Today's write the first. 10 words and why why is that important because it's going to get you started and it's going to get you in the habit and if you can keep doing it and build a streak and if you can have like um, a conversation with one of your direct reports this quarter and if you every quarter you have eight conversations because you've got eight direct reports and it just builds up that's the kind of stuff that lays the groundwork below the surface that over time puts you in power and control of your best habits and and let me tell you this great shit happens when you do that that's yes, our time it, man that's it. our time great one Okay, good stuff, man. And I got another theme for next time. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, Brad, it's wonderful. We will talk to you very soon. And uh, we'll see you next time, everybody, on Plane to Win with me, Mark, and my guy.